December Christmas celebration here at the Nevada County Narrow Gauge Railroad Museum right here in our hometown of Nevada City, California. The Nevada County Narrow Gauge Railroad, of course, is a historic old railroad that used to run from Nevada City, California to Grass Valley down to Colfax where it connected with the Transcontinental Railroad. It ran all the way up until the beginning of World War II. And this is very special to our family because my mom, Juanita Brown, wrote the book on the history of this railroad. So today, we're gonna go take a look at some progress being made on the number five original locomotive from the Nevada County Railroad that they are restoring here in the shed below. And we're gonna get an interesting interview with Miss Sarah Kidder, the historical representative of the president of this here railroad. Hey, Tim's going to show us around a little bit what's going on with the old number five, which is getting restored to running condition, right, mm -hmm. Tim? That's correct, yeah. It's going to be restored into its uh, uh, late 20s, early 1930s uh, configuration as a oil burner. Right now, we've got a brand new boiler that we got from uh, Carson City, and it's been lowered onto the frame and onto the wheels. What they're doing now is they're figuring out exactly what studs and mounting bolts they need. To mount it to the frame to properly? To the frame properly. They're going to take the boiler back off, have those studs welded on, and making any other repairs they got to do to the frame. Uh, they've got the uh, firebox reconfigured, reconfigured as an oil burner. The tender has been completely rebuilt with an oil tank and a new water tank. As an insert inside the original 1875 tender body, so we Cosmetically, it's going to be exactly original, but inside it's got all new tank and lining and everything. Because originally this was a wood burner. Correct. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this was the um, uh, originally built for the Lake Tahoe Railway. The bur the boiler or the the locomotive the itself. Locomotive itself. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And it ran there on the Lake Tahoe Railway until 1899. It was brought here to Nevada County, became our engine five, still as a wood burner and was converted to burn oil sometime around 1909 mm -hmm. and uh, was heavily damaged in the engine house fire in 1915. Uh, rebuilt, but that's when you look at the tender later on, you'll see the rippled iron work and that's from that fire. It ran all the way up until 1940. Wow, so this was here to the bitter end. Mm -hmm. Yeah, sold to Review Studios. Mm -hmm. Used it in the John Wayne movie, The Spoilers, and then a whole lot of other westerns and TV shows after that. Randolph Scott? You do it for Randolph Scott. Randolph Scott. Easy on the train, boys. And then you were instrumental years ago along with the Robinson Timmer and a whole bunch of other volunteers are rescuing this from the back lot of in yeah. Hollywood. Which lot was that? Warner Brothers? Uh, or? It was a Universal Studios. Okay. Backlot. Yeah. And we formed this group with Madeline Helling mm -hmm. and Cliff Summerstrom in 1983. Mm -hmm. John Christensen, one of our charter members. You know, when we set up the, the museum, it was just to get a few artifacts and have a transportation display. Uh, John Christensen uh, basically got a hold of Hollywood and began the process to reacquire this engine 
mm -hmm. as a donation to the, to the <coughs> You found it in the back lot laying on a side full of old uh, Hollywood shells or something? Well, no, it was on the tracks. Yeah. Along with a whole bunch of rolling stock, which we have here. Uh -huh. It was used in all the old westerns. And so when we went to get it mm -hmm. with a Robinson Enterprise truck and all of us crew, uh, I got in the cab and there were all these little boxes of... You know, moldy boxes, and I pick them up in there. They've got the blanks ah. that they used to shoot in the revolvers during <laughs> making the western. So we have a few of those. And, and would they use this in the movie? They kind of just push it around and uh, get some smoke going enough to make the smokestack work. Or well, in the movie, the spoilers they had it in its original Grass Valley configuration. They uh -huh. ran it with a whistle and everything. In fact, the local theater packed with people here in Grass Valley uh -huh. in Colorado, to see that movie, and they, the engine was complete. Uh, they rolled it over, you know, damaged it in the filming of that. And they then rebuilt it with a new boiler, and they ran it with limited steam using oh. the gas uh, burner system to, to generate enough steam to make, uh, you know, the whistle run and then have some smoke in the smokestack. So it was in operational condition Absolutely. in Hollywood. Wow. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I didn't know that. And, uh, and then later on, they put a, a Wisconsin pony engine underneath one of the boxcars that shoved the train back and forth. Oh, okay. And they had a smoke generator mounted into a phony tender that they had uh, to generate the smoke and the steam effects and all that. And so, they kept using it. Yeah. <laughs> now, one of the stories goes, <coughs> when I interviewed Bob Payne many years ago, yeah. he said that he brokered the sale to Universal Studios to, and authorized the major, you know, the rebuild of Engine 5 using number 7's cab. Yeah. He printed it up again. And he brokered the sale of this engine to Universal knowing that that's how this engine was going to be preserved when everything else was getting scrapped and sold off and so on. Because the, everybody in town always had a fondness for this locomotive the whole 40 years that it ran on the Nevada County Air Gauge. And Were you able to verify Bob Payne's story that it was actually factually Has correct? Ever <laughs> we got some questionable data. That's a great story. Yes, that's right. <laughs> What's his book? End of the line. Uh, yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Uh huh. Huh. So, uh, what do we got going uh, technically here? We got the cylinders uh, or those pistons? Main cylinders. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Those. Uh, the pistons get redone, and the cylinders get rehomed. Uh, we also pull the uh, top off of these here. We have a special honing device that's going to hone the valves inside here mm -hmm. that uh, transfer steam from one end of the cylinder to the other, which gets you the propulsion along the side rods. Right, because that cylinder actuates <coughs> both sides back and forth, both ends of it. And these are all original, this whole mechanism, the side rods, the wheels, uh -huh. the wow. frame. And here you get it bolted up to the frame here. And this is the cab from originally, you said number seven? Well, number seven was the Carson and Colorado Railroad engine number four. They called it the Churchill. It was bought secondhand by the Nevada County Air Gauge uh, in the, around 1930, 29, I guess. And it came with this cab. And so when they retired engine number seven and rebuilt five, they took the cab off of seven and put it on engine five. So actually we have in essence, two locomotives pieces here from the original Nevada County Air Gauge. Now tell me about this seam right in the middle of the cab here. Well, this was an original standard gauge locomotive cab that was used on the bigger SP engines. Uh -huh. The narrow gauge engines, as you know, were smaller. So what SP did, instead of building new wooden cabs, uh -huh. they had a surplus of cabs from old, other old locomotives and they would shorten them <laughs> and customize them to fit oh, they on just... their narrow gauge engines make them less wide oh, yeah. huh. and then the idea eventually is to get the whole thing operational enough to run it right here at the museum yes mm -hmm. wow and uh <laughs> since it's all volunteer labor and money what kind of time frame do you think we're looking at well i think john christensen uh, said about a two to three year uh, program huh? to get this back on the wow. back Number on the screen. well that's been a lifelong goal for you i mean uh, when did you rescue what year was that again 1980 uh, the group rescued it in the, uh, well, 1983. The club was founded, 1983. and John Christensen uh, began dialogue, and we went down in 1985 with Robinson Enterprises and uh, their two of their big trucks and volunteers, and pulled it back up here. And of course, all this structure, the whole museum we see here today, has been built since then. 
Correct. Yeah. Right. Yeah. This goes back about uh, 11, 12 years. Yeah. Very good. Tim O'Brien, Nevada County Narrow Gauge Railroad Restoration of old number five. Thanks, Timmer. Uh, we're rebuilding an SP flat car here. Right. An SP narrow gauge, and then we're going to also build a uh, uh, one of the original Nevada County narrow gauge box cars. So tell me about the rebuilding of these cars. This allows you to um, this allows you guys to fund uh, future projects for the railroad, doesn't it? Well, this car, uh, this is last of the universal cars mm -hmm. to be restored, mm -hmm. and so we've had this quite a while. And uh, what's going to happen with this car is we'll rebuild it during the winter and it's actually going to go out on railroad avenue down to the oh. corner of sacramento because we were putting in i saw that new construction down there by the chevron station exactly the old nevada city yeah, and that's where the depot used to depot be. right and so this car uh, is going to be sitting on the track mm -hmm. uh, there uh, next to the kiosk there's going to be 300 feet of track there oh neat and so uh, parallel to the road Right, mm -hmm. but it'll be inset parallel to the road. Actually, we're getting nine feet of the road. They're moving the curb out. Wow, nice. Yeah. So it's going to be a real nice uh, display when it's finished. And so you'll be able to see it from the freeway. Oh yes, the back, uh, the back of the kiosk. It's the bold lettering, yeah. Nevada County Narrow Gauge Railroad Museum. Yeah, great. With the logo, and uh, yes, you'll. I think uh, Gary calculated when you drive by, you have a five second. <laughs> Great. And, 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 and this car is going to be a uh, box car? No, or what style of car? Gondola. But we're gonna, what we're doing is we, we got a, uh, some grant money from mm -hmm. uh, the Railroad Historic Society, and uh, what they funded about half of it. And so, anyway, we'll move it out there as a flat car mm -hmm. yeah, it uh, is a gondola but we're planning to put a load on this mm -hmm. uh, probably we have the nevada city uh, grader mm -hmm. it's an old late 30s grader so we're gonna put that on the car gotcha as something to look at all right yeah it'll be an eye grabber <laughs> <laughs> and they'll say come down to the railroad museum i hope exactly the kiosk yeah, i have the book up uh in my pack if you want to see what it all looks like. But. Great. John Christensen and the volunteers of the Nevada County Narrow Gauge Railroad Museum. Thanks, guys. You betcha. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> okay. Now let's go back inside the museum and meet Sarah Kidder, the first woman president of a railroad in the United States. So it's 1901, and you, Miss Kidder, are now the owner and operator of the Nevada County Narrow Gauge Railroad? President. President. Owner and operator. I rode every time we had gold shipments, I rode on the train with my, my engineers, and uh, my brakeman was the only one that carried a gun besides me. I never lost an ounce of gold, never was robbed. Of course, I always attribute that to the whole rook and telling Black Bart I could outshoot him. Yeah. <laughs> Well, tell us a little bit about your sidearm here today. Well, my husband came to town with two Colt 40 bores and a Bowie knife, and that's what he surveyed. And he always said, be prepared for any contention. We didn't have law enforcement in those days. Mm -hmm. So, what year did your husband start this railroad? We moved here in 1884, and uh, he started surveying then when we started building the house. And before this railroad, he built which railroad? in Monterey, the Salinas Narrow Gauge. And then he was hired to, to, and to build this railroad, and then the, tell me again about the house on Bennett Street, mm -hmm. the mansion, what we, was that? We built that in 1884, it's so about 10 years after we came and moved to the area, it was completed. So you've had a lot of, um, you know about running this railroad from experience, right? Yes. And yes. what sort of capacities have you served up well, to look, this point before I, becoming president? Before being president, I wasn't involved other than with the bookkeeping and the day-to-day -day running of the mine with my husband because his failing it helped. I had to step in and help him to the end. And that's where I learned about the books and, and who was legitimately on the books and who wasn't on the books. And uh, 
reason it took so long is that the circuit judge only came here every three to six months. It wasn't on a regular basis, so when the judge was in town, we proceeded with the court hearing. That's why it took 13 years to resolve it. <laughs> and he lost. <laughs> and what was that whole fight over? He had forged on my books that he was a part owner. Oh, that's right. Okay. And he wasn't. Uh-huh, uh-huh. And so tell me about the profitability of the railroad at this point. <laughs> Well, before I took over, that was it was profitable because of the gold we hauled in and the passengers. There was a lot of commuting to San Francisco as passengers, and also the miners, all the the local town equipment, gold well, mining equipment we hauled back and forth, as well as as you know, groceries and the necessities of life. But hauling, we hauled over 400 tons of gold ore mm -hmm. from this county. We had over 300 uh, miners that we hauled their gold for them, took it to Colfax where it was picked up by the Southern Pacific, smelted in San Francisco, brought back as raw gold, and we returned it to the miners, never losing or robbing. Never got robbed. robbed. Never got robbed and never lost anyone on the train. Well, now, then tell me about your safety record on the railroad here. It was impeccable. We did have one accident with a circus that they misloaded the animals, and it did turn over before the bridge. On, uh, the, Up on Bennett uh, no, Street area? Um, no, no, it, it turned over um, on the Greenhorn area, uh -huh. the extension bridge up there. Ah, uh huh. And well, there was a fatality or two involved there, was there, there? One animal died and one of the circus people died. Uh huh. All right. Tell us about the future and the stock dividends regarding the profit, profitability of this railroad. Well, I only had uh, a quarter of investors left. I, I owned three quarters of the railway myself, mm -hmm. so they had to make me president. Uh -huh. But the rest of the stockholders were very few rich men in San Francisco that never expected to get a payment back from the railway. It was just an investment and a write-off, basically. Mm -hmm. But when I was successful and we weren't going to extend down to Marysville, I turned the profits back to the investors, so they grew as well. Dividends were not heard of in those days. Wow, and you were the first one to return a dividend to this to the uh, original investors. And John had the idea of extending this railroad to Marysville. He did. He did. That was his dream, but uh -huh. he died before. He could uh, okay, the and the, and of course you just stuck with the Nevada City to Colfax line. Right. That was that was profitable. I did change from the oil uh, to. Uh, well, steam from, engine. From you know, wood to oil? Right. Uh, and you did some improvements on the line as well, bypassing some old track? Uh, actually, we tore down the uh, Douglas Fir. It was 96 feet in the air above the ravine. The, uh, Bear River? Bear River Ravine. Mm -hmm. And it was all out of Douglas Fir. And we replaced it all with steel. Mm -hmm. So that was very successful. And it shortened the track of, uh, and the, the time period. The time quite a right. bit. We used to have to stop periodically for wood, and it, it, it took much longer. It took almost four hours to get to Colfax. From Nevada City to Colfax used to be a four-hour trip. And and with the improvements, what sort of a time? Approximately two. Wow! Cut it in half. Wow! Fantastic, Miss Sarah Kidder. Thank you so much for your time. <laughs> You do know it was the Donner Party, the women that survived the Donner Party, that organized the women's group of the 500 women that went to the state legislation and said, look, we want our names on property, we want our names on businesses, and we want to be able to inherit, which none of these things are possible. And the state legislation passed that, and that's why I was allowed to inherit my husband's railroad. Wow. So it was... And they later became the suffragettes. Huh. So there was a few women that survived the Donner Party, came here and started saying, this is just like it is back east. Why did we do this? Why did we come this far? And so they organized 500 women and went to the state legislation and had laws to change for me. And got the women's rights. Exactly. Wow. That's amazing history. Excellent. Thank you, Sarah. Thank you.
you enjoyed this interesting bit of Nevada County history, our local town here. The volunteers are doing a great job of preserving this history. That's what it takes. See you here. Brought to you in part by Santa Barbara Chocolates, Santa Barbara, California. The Union Newspaper, established in 1864, oldest periodical west of the Mississippi, and the over 800 subscribers to Patreon. Thank you for your support.